your comments on the last video were awesome. If you guys missed the last video, you're in luck. You can click right here and it will take you to the last video. Critical that you watch that video before watching this video. I guess that's true for uh, all of my videos. In fact, that's probably the invariant for this playlist uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, awesome comments, okay? I think, if I remember right, all of you got the invariant wrong. Cool. <laughs> that's great. For those of you who engaged, I mean, let's look here. It's, I can't remember how long I go over it's a few days. December 23rd, all right? Christmas Eve, Eve. 605 views. There's 26 comments. 26 divided by 400 is a little bit more than 4%. And that's a typical percentage. I mean, it's, it's, it's common inside of a large group setting that you don't want to raise your hand. Oh, I might get it wrong. I don't want to participate. I'm scared. What will other people think of me? That's how I was in my undergraduate degree. I completely flipped that around in my graduate degree. I just raised my hand, raised my hand, raised my hand, engage. Those of you who engaged and you got the invariant wrong, great. You're learning something. All right, that's my goal here. Uh, let's see here. Anthony Paul. I'm just randomly picking on Anthony Paul here. Thank you for your comment. My answer was that the target value never changes. True. All right. The target value inside of here, when we say, hey, I want to look for target value, if I randomly did the target value, get some other number than what you were looking for. Everything you guys said, all your guesses were great. All right. Don't change the target data. Yes, that's true. But invariants in this case help us ensure that our algorithm is correct. I think I threw you guys off a little bit with my invariant video because in the invariant video, I was moving the tools around. I was writing data, but in a linear search, we don't really write data. We're always just reading the array, looking for the value, and then we return the index as soon as we find it or negative one if we don't find it. So I know I keep telling you guys to drop comments, but that's my way of engaging and seeing where you guys are coming from, what's going on in your head. Those of you who are dropping comments, awesome. That helped me a lot in the last video. The thing I want you to do now, pause the video, and I want you to tell me how you verify that your code is correct. Whether you're in college, high school, professional engineer, tell me. You've written some code. What are some things you do to ensure that your code is correct? Please pause the video now. Drop the comment. Tell me. Do I need to yell at you guys to pause the video? Four per I'll quit chewing you guys out. I know I do that all the time. I look at programming kind of like a sport. You know, you go to the football games and the coaches are working their players hard and they practice and they sweat and they cry. Programming is the same way. You want to be awesome? You want to be awesome! All right, you shouldn't see me uh, coach my four-year-old soccer team. It's pretty bad. Here's our invariant again. Here's our array. Let's talk about how we can prove that our algorithm is correct, how we can guarantee that the algorithm will terminate. I am going to drop three terms right here. First one is initialization. Next one is maintenance. And the last one is termination. Termination is critical if you remember in a previous video. Right here you go. Previous video right up here. In that video we talked about how an algorithm completes in a finite amount of time. It's critical that the algorithm completes in a finite amount of time. We're going to talk about time a lot in this playlist. Uh, if the algorithm never completes, then that's a useless algorithm. Okay? And if the algorithm completes after I die, that's also a useless algorithm, even though it's better than an algorithm that doesn't complete. Now, don't be dumb like me and see these three things and th always think for loop. Uh, thinking about a for loop is a great way to start to understand these things, but these three terms, initialization, maintenance, and termination, uh, go well beyond just a basic for loop. It's, it's a general algorithm structure, all right? But here, I'll just, I'll just talk about it briefly in the context of a for loop here. We have a for loop here. And hey, guess what? This part right here, that's our initialization. Okay, we've set up something to run through our algorithm here. Over here is our maintenance. Okay, maintenance. Just so happens that I++ plus plus is maintenance of this loop and then hey look at this right in here we have a terminate termin i said terminization termination <laughs> all right it's early it's like 4 a.m that's when i usually record these videos because i have a day job okay initialization maintenance termination oh by the way here's a termination condition as well we actually have two termination conditions here i'm going to circle these there we go we, well, I'll, I'll come back to this. Initialization, we have to set up i at zero. We put i 
at the beginning of our array here, is our invariant true after we have initialized our algorithm. Notice I'm saying initialize our algorithm, not initialize our loop, initialize our algorithm. It just so happens that initializing this loop is also initializing our algorithm. Is the invariant true? As we initialize this, well, yes, it's true. All values at indices less than i, well, i is zero, so less than i would be negative, which we're not going to consider in this case, are not the target value. Yeah, we talked about that in the previous video. Okay, maintenance. Right, maintenance. As we move i across the loop here, remember i plus plus, i plus plus, here's our maintenance condition, i plus plus every time i moves up, then we're good to go. Is the invariant still true? Well, yes, all values at indices less than i are not the target value. Well, okay, i right now is at three. These are not a one. Cha-ching, we've maintained our invariant through each iteration of the loop. Good to go. How about termination? Does our algorithm terminate within a finite amount of time? We have two termination conditions here. We have i less than the array length. And hey, we either go past the end of our array, meaning we haven't found it, or we find it and we return. Okay, notice there's two termination conditions here. We also have two returns. This return when we don't find it, this return when we do. So, hey, you know what? We've maintained our invariant for the initialization. We maintained our invariant for maintenance. And we also have a termination condition. Boom. We just satisfied all three of these requirements. We can prove that our algorithm is correct. There are much more mathematical ways of proving that we've initialized, maintained, and terminated correctly. However, I'm not going to go through it. Google it. Look at it if you want to. I wouldn't say it's useless, but I will say that the more mathematically heavy computer scientists that probably don't like coding as much are big into that, which I think it's important, definitely important, uh, but I'm much more practical kind of programmer, and, and there you go.